Hello everybody, Pokemon Trainer Rob here, and welcome to another edition of the Pokemon Go Log Series. It's been a very, very long time since my last update. I haven't done an update like this since August 15th, I believe? Yeah, yeah that was the last time I did a uh, Pokemon Go Log video, so it's been a while. It's been four months. Uh, it is the middle of December now, so uh, it has been pretty much four months since my last update. And there have been a lot of new features and a lot of new happenings in the world of Pokemon Go. And uh, since I recently picked up the game again, because yes, there was a period of three months where I wasn't playing, I decided it would be a good enough time to start talking about some of the things going on with Pokemon Go. Some of the things that I haven't talked about in the log series yet, and just some other things on my mind about the game, because... Honestly, even though I did kind of lose interest for about three months, uh, I'm still very much invested in this game. Uh, it's a very fun game. I love going out to catch Pokemon. I think it's a great social experience as well if you can find people to play the game with. And uh, I still really, really enjoy it, and I still have very high hopes about the future of the game too. Uh, there are some things I'm not super satisfied with, but we'll get into that as we go throughout this video. Uh, but yeah, uh, so I guess before we get started, I guess just to kind of explain why I wasn't playing for so long, uh, there's really not a lot to it. Uh, there was just a huge period of time where I just had a lot I was working on. Uh, I was streaming a lot, so streaming kind of cut back on times I could go out and play the game. Uh, the last few months of summer and the first few months of fall were a lot more hot than I thought they would be, so... The weather was, like, really uncomfortable for me to go outside and play. It just wasn't really in my mind, honestly. So instead of uh, trying to force time, I just stopped playing. I kind of kept my eye on updates as they'd come out. I have a few friends who are very invested in the game as well, so I kind of got updates from them as well. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really play for a really long time. But back when uh, Thanksgiving came around... I decided to pick it up again. I went outside, had a very nice first session back with Pokemon Go, and uh, I've been playing it again very regularly. I've been out every single day, and even if I don't have a super long session, I at least take a little walk around the block, catch any Pokemon I see, get any Pokemon stops that are nearby, and then just kind of leave it at that. So I've been at least putting time into the game. Uh, maybe not as much as I used to, but it's still a healthy amount of time that I can at least talk about for a log series like this, and I think that's all that's important. So for this particular video, I'm not going to make this just a giant marathon of me talking about all of the updates since my last Pokemon Go log video. I'm actually going to go pretty light with this. I'm just going to give a brief status update on my progress with the game. I'll then talk about some of the things I like from all the new features that have been incorporated since my last video. And then, of course, talk about all the things I don't really like about the updates since my last video. And then, of course, I'll kind of talk about just my impressions with the game moving forward and how I think the game should move forward. Uh, so, yeah, I don't want to make this video super long or anything, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with this. So, first up, we have the status update. And uh, as far as progress is concerned, I haven't exactly been making a whole lot of progress Obviously, I stopped playing the game for a while, so my stats aren't really that much different from the last time I played. Uh, for my last video, I believe I was level 21, and I had 75 Pokemon in my Pokedex. Uh, now I am level 23, and I have 85 Pokemon in my Pokedex. So, I've really only gained 2 levels and 10 Pokemon, which isn't really a lot. Uh, but to be fair, it is kind of getting to the point where uh, getting experience for level ups... Uh, takes a really, really long time. It takes about 100,000 experience for me to actually level up, and that's just a lot of experience in general. Uh, so it's really not too surprising that I'm going about it pretty slow. It'd be a slow process even if I continued to play the game as opposed to putting it down for a while. Uh, but anyway, as far as my new catches are concerned, um, and I'm going to go through each of these one by one because technically... Uh, every catch has a little story to go alongside of it, and that's kind of the thing I like about this game anyway, because, you know, even if you're just essentially catching 150 Pokemon in pretty much the same exact way, uh, there, there's at least some kind of thinking that goes uh, in your brain when you're actually catching them, and some kind of story that's actually involved with them, and that's actually something I find really, really cool about this game. Uh, so the first Pokemon I got since my um, last log video was a Grimer. 
Uh, I found this Grimer in an egg, and uh, it happened not long after the last video, so it was a good feeling to know that, oh, okay, well, I just did a log video, and look, I already have another Pokemon. That's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, Grimer was uh, one of my first catches after my uh, last log video. Uh, the next Pokemon I got was actually a Slowpoke. Uh, I can't remember where exactly I was to find this Slowpoke, but uh, what was cool about it is Slowpoke was the Pokemon that I was trying to catch uh, during that one day where I almost collapsed due to heat exhaustion. And uh, I was unable to track it down because the radar was starting to... Uh, it was the time when the three-step system was uh, getting ready to be uh, changed for the uh, no-step system. And then you had to actually locate all the Pokemon yourself. And it was basically a random crapshoot to actually find anything. Uh, so yeah, I was unable to get Slowpoke that day, but I was able to get it this day, which was honestly really, really cool. So I'm glad I was able to pick that up. Uh, the third Pokemon I got was actually a Poliwhirl. And as you guys know, Poliwhirl is my most favorite Pokemon. I love Poliwhirl so much. And whenever I had any sort of idea that a Poliwag or Poliwhirl was near, uh, just Poliwag, since I never actually got a Poliwhirl via capture, I always had to, um, I had to evolve the one I actually got. Uh, but whenever I'd see a Poliwag on the radar, I'd immediately just drop everything I was doing and try to find it because I wanted a Poliwhirl so bad and uh, after a lot of work I was able to get one and I was really really happy about it too because as you guys know Poliwhirl is my favorite Pokemon and I love it so much. The next Pokemon I was able to obtain was a Growlithe and the cool thing about Growlithe is first of all it was very elusive. I found one actually very close to when I found the Grimer and it ended up running away from me, which was really, really, really freaking annoying. So uh, that was a shame, but I was able to find a few others. Uh, another one ran away from me, but the third one I found was finally able to stay around, and I was able to catch it. And finally, finally, Growlithe was in my possession. Uh, the other cool thing about Growlithe is Growlithe is actually one of the few families, uh, aside from a bunch of the uh, one-off Pokemon that don't have evolutions in the first gen, uh, but um, Growlithe is one of the last few families I still needed at least one member from. Uh, the other two I can think of off the top of my head right now are um, the Dratini family and also the uh, Magnemite family for some freaking reason. Seriously, I have no idea where all the Magnemites are. They're just, like, gone, apparently. Uh, so yeah, it was finally cool to have Growlithe. Uh, it's good to know that uh, for the most part I have every single family, just a few other stragglers here and there. And, you know, Magnemite has to be around somewhere. I mean, I can't go without a Magnemite for too much longer, I assume. Uh, so maybe I can track one down. We'll just have to wait and see. The fifth Pokemon I was able to obtain was Wartortle. And it's actually kind of interesting because... I got both Charmander and Bulbasaur very close to when I started playing the game, and it took a very, very long time for me to track down Squirtle, yet Wartortle is actually the first starter evolution I've actually obtained. Uh, so yeah, even though Squirtle was the last starter I got, it was the first starter evolution I got, which is, well, I find it interesting anyway. Uh, so yeah, I was able to get enough Squirtle, so I evolved my highest CP Squirtle into a Wartortle, and now I start the farming for a Blastoise, but again, starter final evolutions take a really, really long time to get to. Uh, pretty much any three-stage evolution, with exception to like the very common ones like uh, Pidgey and then the Bugs and stuff like that, uh, you have to get 100 candies just for the second evolution to the third evolution, so it takes a really, really, really long time to get the final starter forms. In fact, it's probably more likely you'll find one of the starter final evolutions in the wild as opposed to evolving one. That seems to be the trend with all my friends anyway. Uh, so yeah, I'm starting the long grind for the final evolutions. I'm getting kind of close to uh, getting Bulbasaur's second evolution, but my god, Charmander was the first Pokemon I got in Pokemon Go, and I have not seen another one ever, so... Really, really lacking on those Charmander candies, and uh, I really would like to find another Charmander, but 
it's taken a really, really long time to get one. Uh, so yeah, War Turtle was number five. Uh, number six, and this was actually a very iconic catch for me, uh, I was able to find a Rhydon in the wild. And what was cool about this Rhydon is that it had a really, really, really high amount of CP. Uh, so I was almost wondering, well, will I even be able to get this? <laughs> Uh, but sure enough, I kept trying, and sure enough, I was able to obtain this Rhydon. And right now, it's actually the highest CP member on my team, so it's my strongest Pokemon, in theory. I mean, I, I wouldn't say its moves are really that great, but, uh, you know, it, it has probably the most HP of my entire team. It's probably the most defensive of my team, so uh, it'll definitely be... Uh, a member I'll take with me a lot, unless there's, like, water and grass Pokemon. Otherwise, well, he's not going to be any use because he's rock and ground. But still, uh, I was really, really happy to get this ride on. Uh, I found it at uh, an old church I actually used to go to as a kid, so it was kind of cool to uh, find one there. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that was ride on my sixth catch. I'm going to lump my seventh and eighth catch together because... Uh, I was kind of working on these next two Pokemon at the same exact time, uh, but we have Vileplume, which was my 7th, and Victory Bell, which was my 8th. And what's funny about this is I actually got Vileplume before I took my long 3-month break, and I got Victory Bell like a day or two after I came back from my break. I was a lot closer to Victory Bell than I thought I was, and I was just finding a lot of Bell Sprouts during those days when I came back. Uh, so yeah, I was working on these two for a really long time. Uh, Bellsprout and Oddish have been actually fairly common in my town, so it was kind of cool to uh, save up for these two. And uh, they're very, very powerful as well. They're definitely uh, two of my strongest grass types. In fact, the Vileplume actually has a fairy move, uh, which makes it very, very valuable whenever there's a Dragonite nearby or something of that nature. So... Uh, two very helpful members of my team for sure, and it was really cool to get them uh, pretty close to each other as well. Uh, the last two Pokemon I'll also kind of lump together because I've been also working on trying to get these two as well, along with uh, a few others that have been really, really close to maxing out their candy levels. Uh, but the ninth catch I had was Seedra, and the tenth catch I had was Nidoqueen. So yeah, not really too much to uh, tell here. I've just been trying to hunt for these guys a lot recently. And I was able to hunt successfully because I have their final evolutions. And I'm really, really excited about that. And they're both pretty powerful as well. I feel like Nidoqueen, aka Toriel, could uh, be a bit stronger. But uh, I'm not going to complain too much. I mean, it's still over 1,000 CP. I can still use it to fight, and that's all that really matters. Uh, the Seedra is really cool because it has dragon moves. So... It doesn't even have any water moves, but it has dragon moves. And that's honestly a good thing because dragon moves are awesome. And whenever they add Kingdra to the equation, uh, this will be the most likely and best candidate for Kingdra just because of the uh, nature of the moves it has right now. But who knows, it might actually change moves when it evolves, so I don't really have any control over that. Uh, but yeah, those are the uh, 10 Pokemon I've caught. I'm getting very close to several other evolutions. I'm getting close to Cloyster, I'm getting close to Tenacruel, I'm getting close to Executor, and I'm also getting close to Nido King as well. Um, I technically have enough to get Graveler right now, uh, but the problem is the Geodudes I've been finding are very, very weak CP-wise, so I'm almost thinking, you know, maybe I'll just wait on uh, Geodude evolving until I get a better Geodude, and then when I have one with a better CP, I'll evolve that one, and then I can get Graveler. Uh, but right now, like, it's just, I just don't really like the CPs that I've been getting. Like, when you get only, like, 100 CP, that might seem cool for someone who's starting out, but uh, that's really, really low, honestly. So, yeah, I've been kind of trying to uh, wait to evolve Pokemon just in case I find a better one down the road. And as far as Pokemon I've seen but missed out on, obviously I talked about the Growlithe Saga earlier, uh, but I also found a Dragonair very, very close to where I live. And uh, unfortunately, after evading five Ultra Balls, it ran away. I don't remember the CP it was at. It was a decent CP, but uh, I can't imagine it would have been too great, even if I did get enough candies to evolve it to a Dragonite. 
Uh, but yeah, I missed out on Dragonair, unfortunately. And it was a shame, because I didn't have any of the Dratini family yet, and I still don't at this point. And Dragonair was actually the first one I actually find in the wild, too. I'm guessing I'll probably have to find Dratini through an egg or something, and, uh, I don't know, just get hella lucky to find any candies for it. So yeah, unfortunately I could not start that family. And unfortunately, I lose my perfect record of being able to catch everything I've seen. But it doesn't really matter anymore since, uh, since the last update, or since the last time I updated the series, uh, Pokemon Go did change things around to the point where uh, if you've seen a Pokemon that you don't have in battle at a gym or something, uh, it counts that as adding it to the, your Pokedex or your seen Pokedex, so... Uh, yeah, I didn't have a perfect record regardless of whether or not I found that, uh, got that Dragonair or not. So that's kind of a shame, but it also doesn't really matter. I don't have to worry about perfect records anymore either. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much my status update. So now I can actually move on to talking about some of the newest features of Pokemon Go since my last update and what I like and what I dislike about them. So right off the bat, major, major kudos to Niantic for some of the newest features that they've added since my last video. The buddy system, the appraisal system, the holiday and daily event bonuses. They've honestly just added a lot of really cool things that I think really belong in a game like this, and I think it's really great. Uh, the buddy system I think is perfect because I've been saying since the beginning that there should be another way to get candy. And even though this is a slow way to get candy, it makes sense. You pick a Pokemon, you walk with that Pokemon, and then after every uh, three kilometers, uh, you get a candy bonus. It's only one candy bonus, and it's only for those three kilometers, but it's still something. And uh, it allows you to uh, get candy for maybe an evolution line you're currently working on. It'll speed up the process a little bit in addition to catching uh, members from that particular family. Uh, but it does make sense, and it's something that I have been honestly wishing for since the game came out. So I think that was a good move uh, by me Niantic in adding that. Uh, the appraisal system, I wouldn't say it really adds a whole lot to the game, but it does answer a lot of questions that I feel like a lot of people had in terms of, okay, well, why are some Pokemon that much stronger than other Pokemon? And it has to do with uh, hidden values that we really can't see uh, when we look at our Pokemon's data. You can really see like how much the Pokemon weighs, how tall is it, how big is it, how small is it, uh, its typing, its HP. But there's all these other hidden stats that we can't really comprehend. And I think the appraisal system is a good way to kind of analyze your Pokemon and see what its strengths are. Uh, you pretty much have to go to a website to see what all of the different phrases your um, uh, gym leader master guy says, but I think it does help in determining, okay, well, this Pokemon's going to be a strong addition to my team. Uh, he has a strong aptitude to getting good level ups and increasing CP to really high levels, and its attack will also be its best stat as well. Uh, its defense is its best stat, HP is its best stat, stuff of that nature. All of that info you can essentially figure out through the appraisal system, and I think that's a good way to at least see how these Pokemon work, because for the longest time, people didn't really understand how that did work. Uh, you'd have two Pokemon fighting in a gym, and it seemed like you should be able to win, uh, but for some reason, the other Pokemon's getting like harder hits than you think it would. And again, it all has to do with those hidden abilities that we can't see, and I think the appraisal system is a good way to do that. Maybe not the best system, uh, but still, considering that it came out around the same time as the buddy system, uh, it's still nice to see that, oh wow, we actually had these two pretty decent-sized updates so close to each other. And that was one of the things that actually got me excited, like, wow, they're actually doing something with all this stuff. They're actually adding some new features that we didn't even expect to be in the game. And then we also get to the uh, daily bonuses and the holiday bonuses where, uh, particularly so far during the uh, Halloween season and also during the Thanksgiving season, they'd have a little bonus of some kind. I didn't really get to participate in the Halloween season as much, uh, but from my understanding, uh, it definitely increased the spawn rate for Pokemon like the Ghastly family, the Drowsy family... Uh, some other of the ghost, poison, psychic types, I think. 
Uh, so again, it was kind of nice to see that, oh, those Pokemon could actually be available to people who uh, need to find those Pokemon still. And it's kind of a shame, because I really do need to work on the Ghastly family a lot, and uh, I didn't really get a chance to work on it, because I didn't really play during that time. However, I did get a play during the Thanksgiving event, though, which gave you pretty much double experience, double Stardust, basically just double bonuses in general for anything you did. And honestly, it was a good way to level up, I feel like. And if they do that for every season, I think it will kind of encourage people to play, especially during those times. And those would also be good times to release new updates as well. So I kind of have a feeling that during the December or the Christmas season, uh, they'll do essentially the same thing, and they may actually introduce something new, something uh, much new that could really uh, take the game by storm. I don't know if it'll be second-gen Pokemon just yet, but still, I'm really excited to see how uh, this will continue on. But daily bonuses, they make sense. Basically, whenever you catch the first Pokemon of the day, or do your first uh, Pokestop swipe of the day, uh, you get a nice little bonus in addition to what you would normally get. And if you actually keep it going for all seven days of the week, you get a really, really big bonus at the end that's like, I don't want to say it's like double or triple or anything, but it's definitely like, it feels like it's like five times the amount of stuff you'd normally get, which is really, really nice. Uh, so yeah, those kind of things, they make sense. It makes sense to uh, definitely reward players during big holiday get-togethers and holiday outings. And it does. Re it's nice to reward players for coming back every day to at least get a little bit of playtime in, even if it's just kind of walking around the block every now and then for like a, a few short minutes every day. It's still something, and it still kind of rewards you for uh, taking that time to do that. So I do really, really like those features. I think it was a great way to uh, improve the game, uh, particularly when I wasn't even really playing the game. Uh, so yeah, I do applaud Niantic for those features, but... There are also some things that I don't exactly applaud Niantic for, and I think it's as good as time as any to start getting into that stuff. And with that, I think it's time we start talking about the most recent changes to Pokemon Go. And uh, it's kind of interesting, all the stuff I talked about were things that were introduced while I was not playing, while everything else I'm going to talk about was introduced after I started playing again. Uh, so these are quite literally the most recent changes, changes that happened like a week or two ago. Uh, so yeah, this is very recent stuff we're talking about now, so I'm glad I was able to cover everything in a pretty short period of time. Uh, but anyway, first of all, one of the newest additions to the game was Ditto. Ditto is now a thing. Uh, basically, you keep catching Pokemon as normal, and at some point, you'll catch a Pokemon and it'll be revealed that it's actually a Ditto in disguise. And that's essentially how you get your first ditto. So it's kind of just by luck and random chance that you actually encounter one. Uh, but after that, I believe from then on, uh, you'll actually be seeing dittos normally on the map. Uh, from my understanding, I don't know that for absolute fact since I haven't found a ditto yet. Uh, but yeah, ditto is available and I think it's kind of clever with how they introduce them. It kind of uh, uses ditto's main mechanic to its advantage in how you actually obtain it. Uh, so yeah, that's ditto. The other change they recently made was that they started rolling out the radar system, the uh, Pokestop radar system that I think I barely showed off a little bit in the last Pokemon Go log video. Uh, if you remember correctly, uh, what you had in that radar system was you had the standard nearby system where you see all the Pokemon that are nearby, and then you also see Pokemon at Pokestops. And essentially, with the way the radar works in its current state, is you have your list of Pokemon, you have a Pokestop behind each Pokemon, and if you go to that Pokestop, you will more than likely find that Pokemon. Uh, there's very few instances in where you'll not get the Pokemon, usually if the timer runs out and it runs away, uh, stuff of that nature, uh, that's obviously not a guarantee. But for the most part, if you get there and the Pokemon is still on that radar at that Pokestop, you will more than likely find it. I think this is pretty cool because this is like the first radar where it's like a guarantee that you'll actually find something as opposed to just kind of hoping that you run into it or trying to track it down and just hoping the game doesn't screw up or anything. Uh, so it's nice to have that guarantee. It does make it a little easy, I guess you could say, but uh, still, it's just uh, half of this radar. 
Unfortunately, though, the other half of the radar, at least in terms of what we saw back in the day when we first saw the first glimpses of this new system, isn't exactly in play yet. Uh, so whenever you look at your radar, you only see Pokestop Pokemon. You don't see any other Pokemon that might be nearby you. I think this is not good because I love tracking down Pokemon and it pretty much means that any other Pokemon you find that aren't at Pokestops, it's going to be once again a random crapshoot of whether or not you'll run into it or not. And people who don't live in urban areas where there's a lot of Pokestops are pretty much screwed when it comes to finding the Pokemon they want to catch. They pretty much just have to hope that they randomly run into one, making the game pretty much unplayable for all those people who live in rural and kind of countryside areas. Which is honestly a big shame. I really uh, feel sorry for people who live in those areas. I kind of live in one of those areas, but I at least live in a town where there are a few Pokestops, so it's not so bad for me. Uh, but I imagine for people who live in less developed areas, it's probably even worse. Uh, there is a place nearby where I live where I can go that has a lot of Pokestops, so I imagine the system being very good there. But again, it just kind of sucks for people who uh, don't live in those areas and who have to kind of just rely on walking down the street in their countryside one road area, which really kind of sucks. So I really hope Niantic fixes this and they actually roll out the other half of this radar soon. I'm very confident there is another half to this radar because it's like I said in the images we saw before they had both the nearby Pokemon and the Pokestop Pokemon and it just makes no sense uh, while they're both not there at this current point. Obviously it has to do with data, maybe it's taken a lot more data than the Niantic thought they would need and that's pretty obvious that that's probably the case or that they're still just trying to figure out all the kinks and all of that. But again, I really don't like their uh, thought process of, oh, we'll just release our half-assed attempt at this for now, and then when we get it fixed, we'll just put that up there as well. I really don't like when companies do that, because uh, honestly, the radar they had before uh, would be a better alternative to what they actually have going on right now. Uh, so I don't really understand why they're making these decisions. Uh, they are kind of a rookie and beginning development team, so I can't really... Uh, be too surprised at these decisions, especially since they're handling a project of this magnitude. Uh, but again, it is very disappointing, and I can understand why a lot of people have uh, probably lost interest in the game after this most recent update because of that. Because like I said, it makes it pretty unplayable in some parts of the world, and that's just, that's just kind of a shame for those players, because I know there are a lot of people who have been really, really excited about this project, and it just it's kind of a bummer that they can't really play it effectively, unlike other people. Okay, since I've discussed all of the updates, or at least all of the updates since the last video I made, I'm going to start concluding this video and giving my final thoughts and just kind of my impressions of the game moving forward. Uh, for the most part, I am still very optimistic about this project. I think it's a great game. I still really enjoy playing this. Honestly, if I had to name a game of the year for me, uh, Pokemon Go would probably be that game because I've honestly had the most fun with this game, uh, despite even some of the more frustrating decisions that Niantic has made with this project. Again, it's not so much that I'm really angry at Niantic, I'm more so just kind of disappointed with them, uh, because they are essentially fumbling with such a great project, and a project that people have been wanting for a really, really long time, and it just seems like they're making very rookie and amateur mistakes that uh, you wouldn't expect a company to be making with a project like this. And it just doesn't seem like they're really listening to a lot of their feedback or criticism because uh, it seems like when they do start listening, they make a little bit of progress and they kind of move forward with baby steps and make, honestly, some interesting additions. But then they kind of take a giant step back by making a huge blunder that kind of just retcons all of those good things that they did in the first place. So I don't know. It's it's honestly just a shame. It, it's just a giant shame. I would like to see them kind of get their act together and kind of uh, do a little bit better with this project. I think the first thing they need to really be focusing on is getting the radar working uh, in the way they initially promised us, or at least what they originally showed us, because I do think that's a good way to go about it. Because as it is right now, I think it just alienates too many players, too many uh, rural players who don't really have any urban areas near them. Uh, so yeah, I do think that's their first order of business. And I think they do need to 
honestly fix that before they even think about introducing Gen 2 Pokemon to the mix. Because I have a feeling they might get the idea that, oh, people want Gen 2 Pokemon? Well, let's just worry about that right now. But then, meanwhile, they're losing a lot of these other players who just really can't even play the game at this current point. So they need to get their priorities straight. They need to really start thinking about what needs to be improved. I would also like to see, keep seeing some of these small additions like the buddy system, like the appraisal system, like the daily and holiday events. Stuff like that that add, like, not really that much to the game, but still enough to actually give it uh, more dimensions to be playing through the game as well. And then after that, once they kind of keep doing that, and once they kind of get the radar uh, kind of the way it's supposed to be and how they envisioned it originally, then they can maybe start uh, adding in second-gen Pokemon. But I don't feel like they've honestly reached that point where uh, Gen 2 Pokemon is the way to go next. I think that there's a lot of other things they need to do first, at least in my opinion. And uh, that's pretty much how I feel about the game moving forward is they have some work to do but for the most part i haven't really lost hope or i haven't really lost optimism about the project either if that makes sense as far as other things i'd like to see aside from a working radar but uh for other things uh as usual i do think the uh, gym battle and just trainer battle stuff in general could be tweaked i feel like for being such a major part of the normal pokemon games it's such a small part of Pokemon Go that just doesn't really seem as interesting as it would in any other medium. Uh, so yeah, I think that definitely needs to be changed. I don't really have any ideas for how it could be changed, but I, I just feel like there's something not quite right about that. And uh, I think that could be best improved in some fashion. I just couldn't tell you what fashion. Uh, as for other things I've been thinking about, uh, one thing that has been bothering me as of late are level up rewards. Uh, for both level 22 and level 23, I got really, really bad rewards for leveling up. Literally just like 10 Ultra Balls, 10 High Potions, and uh, 10 Berries. But like, I haven't gotten another uh, Egg Incubator, I haven't gotten any uh, Incenses, I haven't gotten any uh, of those... Um, level up doubler things that doubles your level ups the lucky eggs that's that's what they're called i haven't gotten any of those in a really really long time and i feel like those are things that should be given especially at high level ups uh more frequently than they are like for lower level ups and it's just kind of a shame that i haven't seen any of those in a while and i have a lot of eggs i need to hatch too so i would i would really like to see one of those uh, before too long and it's kind of a shame I haven't seen very many of those so yeah I'd like to see better level up rewards because right now I'm just getting like nothing for leveling up and it's just a shame because it makes me want to look forward to my level ups even less uh, also in terms of getting candy I think candy should also be slightly altered a little bit uh, maybe not so much in the sense that oh I think candy evolution should be decreased I think they're fine the way it is, although Magikarp's evolution level is way too freaking high than what it should be. Uh, but for example, um, in just like transferring Pokemon, uh, like let's just take the Pidgeotto line for example. Uh, whenever you uh, transfer a Pidgey, you get one candy. Maybe for transferring a Pidgeotto, you should get two candies. Or maybe for transferring a Pidgeot, you should get three candies. Uh, so basically, the stronger your Pokemon is, I feel like you should be getting more candy uh, to uh, basically correlate with the strength of that Pokemon because, hey, a freaking Pidgeotto is 12 Pidgey candies, for crying out loud, so I feel like that should be worth more than just one Pidgey candy when you transfer it. And then also for the fully evolved Pidgeots, which is 60 candies to evolve Pidgeotto to Pidgeot, I just feel like you should be getting more bang for your buck when in terms of what you actually transfer over. And uh, I would definitely like to see that implemented in some way. And then also for, uh, I guess, buddy rewards. Buddy rewards are fine. Getting one candy may not seem like a lot uh, for every uh, three or five kilometers you have to walk with them. But still, uh, every little bit helps, and I think that's fine. Uh, maybe for certain milestones you should get more as opposed to just having... A uh, random chance where you might get two candies as opposed to one. Someone told me that there is a chance that can happen, but I have not seen that yet in the uh, 
probably about 30 or 40 kilometers I've walked with my Poliwhirl. So I don't know. That could be altered, I guess, but for the most part, I'm not really complaining about that or think that needs to be something that needs to be focused on or anything. And yeah, just, again, giving more reason for people to actually play the game more. Uh, maybe uh, have events where maybe a certain type of family could be like more easy to find during a weekend or something because there are still some families I haven't seen yet in Pokemon Go. Uh, just stuff like that to really encourage players to play the game. I think that'd be the best way in moving forward, and I'd like to see more of that stuff. Because, again, some of the little things they have introduced have been really, really good. Uh, it's just a lot of the big things that they kind of take a huge hit and blunder with. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much what I'd like to see in the future. Uh, but I've been talking for over 35 minutes now. I'm going to go ahead and kind of close this out. Uh, thank you guys for being very patient with me in... Uh, making this fourth video it has been a very long time but uh, again i wasn't playing for the longest time and i really do want to get back into it now that the weather's kind of cooler and i like playing outside and weather like this uh, so it's going to give me more of a reason to go outside and play this game so maybe i can get back into it and as we approach the holidays uh, where there might be some new updates coming it'll give me a chance to actually talk about those updates too so uh I'll try to be a lot quicker with the next log video as opposed to this one is basically what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, thank you for uh, watching, fellow Pokemon trainers. This has been Pokemon Trainer Rob. I'll see you guys for the next Pokemon adventure. Later, folks.